Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. Tonight I'm going to be doing a review of a drama from Scotland, English language, released in the year 2010, directed by Peter Mullen, and this film is called NEDS. Now NEDS stands for Non-Educated Delinquents, and the story uh, is as follows. From award-winning director Peter Mullen, NEDS, Non-Educated Delinquents, is the story of a young man's journey from prize-winning schoolboy to knife-carrying teenager. Struggling against the low expectations of those around him, John McGill changes from victim to avenger, scholar to Ned, altar boy to glue sniffer. When he attempts to change back again, his new reality and recent past make conformity near impossible and violent self-determination near inevitable. So the movie is about a, a young child's transformation from a very good student to a knife-carrying Ned. So basically it's set in Scotland in the 70s and this young man, John McGill, he is a very good student and in primary school he is winning all these awards and he seems to have a bright future. Um, you know, considering that where he is growing up, that is quite an achievement. Now, John has a very abusive father who's constantly putting his mother down. So it's a very, very um, troubled household. I mean, it's not the ideal living conditions and the fact that John is doing so well at school, he is the pride of the family. So when he goes to secondary school or high school, as we call it here in Australia, this is where things start to change for John. Uh, his older brother, Benny, he is in trouble with the law a lot. And people are worried that although John is a very gifted student, he is going to follow in the stoops, uh, footsteps of his older brother. And that inevitably is what happens. Um, he gets mixed up with the wrong, sh uh, the wrong crowd and his life goes on a different direction. And, yeah, he is basically being um, engulfed by this life of violence, and that in turn is threatening to destroy his life. So if you want to know how the movie unfolds, please go out there, see this film for yourself, because that's as far as I am going with a synopsis. Now, my thoughts on the film. I had expectations for this one that it was going to be a really, really good one. Unfortunately, those expectations weren't met, but having said that, it is still a good film. The movie does have its good points. Now, it is a very artistic sort of feeling to the film. It is set in the 70s and it does feel like the 70s. So it does promise that sort of retro sort of feeling and that's what it does deliver. I thought the cinematography was very downbeat. It is set in the um, the less privileged areas of Scotland and, you know, it was very authentic. I kind of feel that a lot of stereotypes are made about British lower class and that it's all concerned with violence. And yes, that may be the case, but I'm sure not all households are like this. So it would be nice to see some movies here and there that portray the working class in a little bit more of a different light. But having said that, you know, it, it doesn't stop the movie from achieving what it wants to achieve, and that is a powerful experience. And yes, it is powerful, but it should have been a hell of a lot more powerful. Now, the acting was very good. The, the lead actor... He was only a fairly young character. I thought he did a very good job, and the supporting cast was very good. Now, be very careful. This edition, Australian release, does not have English subtitles. The Scottish language is very, very thick. Uh, the, the Scottish accent is very thick in this film, so be careful of that. There's a few scenes that I had to rewind. So subtitles would have helped me, but having said that, if you're a native English speaker, you shouldn't have too many problems going into it. The script was a little bit lacking, and um, overall, I mean, the soundtrack too, that was very emotional and that helped where the emotion was needed. Now, after all of this, I kind of felt that the movie didn't really have a message. Now, movies similar to this, uh, like the Swedish film Evil and the English film This Is England, I thought that that really had a, a strong betrayal of um, children who are raised in an environment that is very hopeless and that they really don't have anything better. Whereas in this film, the main character you don't feel sorry for him because although he is surrounded by violence, he's the, the first part of his life, he's a very, very smart young man. So when he kind of goes on the downward spiral, you kind of feel that it's his choice. Whereas in, in This Is England, he is raised, um, he doesn't have a role model and you know the role models in his life are teaching him bad ways, so he's being brought up that way. Whereas in this film, he is a very educated boy, so you kind of feel that he does know the difference between wrong and uh, right, and that he is choosing the things that he actually does, so therefore you don't get a connection with the character as much. Therefore, 
you know, I just felt that there was just no power in it and that although the acting was good, the characters were a little bit um, cardboard cut out. So I didn't really have any um, sympathy for the main character because he really didn't have any remorse. And therefore, I felt that the storyline was a little bit thin on. I didn't quite know what the director was trying to do with it. And it goes for two hours and I thought that two hours was a little bit too long. Now, the violence is very shocking. I thought that it wasn't over the top, but when it does happen, it really hits you hard, and I really like the style of the violence in the film. It's not gory, but there are some pretty brutal scenes. So that one, it, that uh, portrayed a very strong message, and it showed the real authentic violence that these sort of areas in the world have. So, um, yeah, there are strong positives to the film, but I just thought that the storyline was really lacking. I really liked the way that the film ended. I thought that that was a metaphor. I'm not going to tell you what it was, but I actually thought it was a very strong ending. But as I said, you just don't feel any sympathy for this guy. He does some pretty bad things, but you feel that it, he does know better. He knows what he is doing is wrong. Therefore, he is painted more of a, as a villain. And it's kind of like the movie is condoning what this guy is doing because he was brought up in a harsh environment and I think that's pretty weak I think that you know you have to be accountable for your actions you have to be responsible for what you're doing so as a result of what he does I feel that it was a choice it wasn't so much that he didn't know any better so as a result of that I just got really annoyed with this character I wanted to see the little shit get beaten up so that's exactly I don't think that's exactly what the director wanted I feel that you know it does have its moments of you know class but overall, you know, the negatives prevent it from being a truly memorable film. So I'm only going to give this one three out of five. I know that, you know, the positives in the film are worth uh, watching. So I am going to recommend it on that. But it really should have been a hell of a lot better than it actually was. Because with a little bit more depth, a little bit more emotion, and a little bit more of a sympathetic quality towards the main character, then I thought it really could have been a brilliant film. But as a result, it is a good film. And I still would recommend it if you like these types of movies. But it is nowhere near as good as This Is England. I felt that that movie had a lot more emotion and raw humanity in it. Whereas this movie just kind of skimmed the surface. So that's my review of Ned's. Three stars. It is coming recommended, but it was slightly disappointing. Alright guys, that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, keep watching movies. And I'll see you later. Bye.